You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, we will be transforming our dolls into magical girls. Well, I think it's magical lady in my case. In collaboration with these talented artists, I present you Moonlight Jewels, Heroes Workshop, Enchanterium, The Dolly Geek, and Mr. Super Customs. Make sure to check out their dolls and I will link them down below. It actually took me some time to figure out how I would make a magical character, and I thought it was going to be easy since I enjoyed watching animes like Sailor Moon, Magic Knight Ray Earth, Cardcaptor Sakura, and Akazuken Chacha, but aesthetically, there was something off. Then, I thought of maybe making my drag persona as a magical girl. Well, you know, I think the only requirement is to have a character that transforms beautifully and have powers, right? And that's how drag makes me feel when I dress up. It makes me feel so confident and beautiful. I started sketching some ideas that I would love to transform into, and some were great and some weren't so great. But I drew a lot of inspiration from Jean-Paul Gaultier, Cora Corset, Vinoir Latex, and of course, Thierry Mugler. Obviously, I look more like the villains to everybody else's magical girl, but this is how I'd like to look if I was one. You know, it felt correct, so I just went with it. <laughs> Think of Bayonetta vibes, you know, the protagonist who's just really, really stylish and gothic. Oh my god, this is technically my drag mini-me doll, if the mannequin doll isn't considered one, you know? I gave her the hair I'm wearing in my profile picture, which is my favorite wig, and made the swirls purple, and I changed up the color story of her makeup. She is completely covered in this matte black latex bodysuit inspired by Vinoir and Mugler. The purple swirls were incorporated to match the purple in her hair, and I think it really ties it together. The peekaboo diamond cutouts are designed like a Jean-Paul Gaultier cone bra, and the patent leather look really really stands out from all of the matte black bodysuit. For her weapon, I thought why not give her a whip flogger since I thought it fits her vibe a lot more, and it actually reminds me of Li Mo Chu's fly whisk weapon from the Condor Heroes. She was really meant to have an all black outfit, but I thought of adding purple and red because those are my favorite combination. And unfortunately, spoiler alert, the red cape may or may not have come to fruition. With that being said, let's start her transformation. For our doll, for the canvas of this project, I will be using this The Blondes Barbie that was given to me by Kenny Doll 2017 Again, Kenny, thank you so much. Look, I'm already using it! And I hope you enjoy, um, you know, the ending of it, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, you can see over here she has one shoe on and she has a lot of glue marks from the um, corset and the bodice. So I'm gonna try my best to remove all of this glue with my pliers. And for the most part, I'm going to be sanding it off. Her legs will be a static pose, so I'm over here just super gluing it shut so that it doesn't move when we are sculpting her legs, you know, her, her hips. And of course, to achieve the corseted look, the cinched in waist look, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some body modifications for her. And so I'm just removing kind of like her stomach area, um, specifically kind of like under the ribs where like the smallest part of the body pretty much. And there you have it. We are able to now go ahead and take our wire. And this one is a harder wire. I feel like it helps. And I'm just gonna glue that inside. So the wire will act as kind of like an armature for our clay so that it doesn't really wiggle while we are sculpting her new corseted look. And 
and voila! As you can see, it is the same exact size and height as the one I took off. I thought that was kind of like important to make sure you don't really stretch her torso way too long. So now let's take our epoxy sculpt. This is a two-part epoxy clay and we're just gonna mix it together. And this is an air dry clay. It is an industrial clay if you are new here and it is great for doll projects and doll modifications because you don't have to cure it. It's not like polymer clay and it's, it's great. You know, it comes with different colors as well. If you guys want to try this kind of like corseted look for clay for your dolls, um, I definitely suggest looking at a lot of um, corset photos because there are different shapes of corsetry. There's the waspy waist and like really hourglass ones. So there's so many different shapes and sizes. Um, for that. I also enjoy sculpting more hips to my dolls. I feel like it really really emphasizes the waist a lot more and I also like to give them a little bit of derriere in the in the back. I feel like it equalizes everything and it just makes everything look cohesive in some case. Um, so yeah. And now I'm pretty much done with sculpting the base of her body. And so as you can see, it's a little, it's rough around the edges. So now I'm gonna take my sandpaper over here. And this one is a very, very low grit. I think this was like a 400 grit, which is really, really rough. Um, and so that will really help smooth things out. As you can see over here, I did a 400 grit all the way to, I believe 2000. So that it's really, really fine and it smooths everything. Now I'm just taking my pencil and I'm sketching out kind of like the design of her bodysuit because it's really different to design something for paper. It's like the, the impossible is like possible when you're designing on paper. However, when you are gonna be doing that in 3D, even if it's by clay or something, sometimes it can look wonky. So I'm just here trying to figure out some details and, you know, changing things last minute to kind of match her body. And this is pretty much the look that I'm trying to go for. So like the diamond cutouts are kind of like intertwined. They travel in the back. So they kind of make sense design wise, like the overlapping and everything. So let's go ahead and form the iconic cone bra moment for this one. So fun fact, maybe, maybe it's fun, but um, for my sketches early on for this um, doll, I actually designed the cutouts to be um, see-through so like you can see details of her chest and um, I was like hmm really really cute really really nice but maybe not right now um, so I was like you know what let's just go vintage you know you can never go wrong with vintage and let's give her a cone bra and specifically this is inspired by Jean-Paul Gaultier's cone bra for Madonna <laughs> And also this Dita Von Teese look that she is wearing. Obviously it's closer to Dita Von Teese. However, hers is not as cone shaped, um, but this is what I had in mind when I wanted the patent leather look. And I love it. I need it actually. Not gonna lie, I was actually really like happy and oddly um, relaxed while um, sculpting these lines for the ribbing um, or you know like stitches and stuff so I thought that was really really cool for some reason. Obviously it's not perfect. I think sometimes when you're mixing epoxy sculpt you have to kind of time it because it does get more um, harder over time so Sometimes it's too soft to sculpt a certain thing and then sometimes it's too hard to get a certain a certain detail So you gotta kind of time it and mine definitely did not come out perfect, which is fine. You know, nothing is perfect But 
for some reason, while I was sculpting the back part of this um, detail, I kept thinking rice terraces in the Philippines, and I was like, it kind of looks like it, obviously because there's different, you know, levels and dimensions, and it looks like terraces and stairs for some reason, but yeah, I thought it was funny. After the ribbing details are completely sculpted and dried and cured, which takes almost a day, um, we can now build the bodysuit on top of it. So now, as you can see over here, I am building up um, the, the bodysuit and, you know, giving those details that will really kind of emphasize that the ribbing detail is underneath the bodysuit. You know what I mean? The overlapping um, detail, kind of. I don't know if I'll be able to um, explain this um, proficiently, um, but as you can see, I'm not really covering the entire body with clay, even though it is gonna be a bodysuit outfit. Um, I'm just covering what is needed to be sculpted. So because it is technically a skin tight bodysuit, I'm only sculpting the ones that are lifted. So like seams and obvious design aspects like you know, like like this part over here. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly or proficiently. Um, so if you get it, you know, yeah, you thank God. But if not, um, so pretty much I'm just this I'm just I'm just sculpting what needs to be lifted, what needs to be 3D'd. I don't know. I don't know, sorry. <laughs> As you can see in the sketch, this was supposed to be a horizontal neckline, but I thought it was too kind of like blunt and it didn't really match the overall vibe. So I turned it into this kind of like arrow, um, kind of like to match the diamonds and all of the angles. And I thought it was perfect and better. I know a lot of you guys have your own original magical girl or magical character in your mind and I would love to know more about them so please describe them down below in the comments like what is their name, what is their purpose, what is their power, what is their fashion, what, what is the look, you know what I mean? Um, I'd love to hear it and I'd love to imagine all of these things so yeah. And for the back, I just decided to kind of mirror what's going on in the front, but a little bit more elongated and a little bit more flatter, obviously. Um, but this is technically not going to be seen um, when we add the cape to her and everything, but you know, why not? And of course, everyone needs a beautiful pump, a beautiful Model Muse pump over here, which is perfect. Well. Not really. You know, I had to actually um, Cinderella stepsisters her ankle over here because um, it was a hard fit, but I just um, super glued it to make sure it doesn't budge. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend it with her legs so that it looks like boots. To add more hint of realism, even though she's wearing something really tight like latex and stuff, there will be some wrinkles here and there which is very inevitable. So I thought adding some wrinkles behind her knee will kind of help, you know, sell the illusion. And for her gloves, I cut out this shape over here, it kind of looks like a wing. Um, and of course we're going to transfer that onto our warbler, our heat activated uh, Dorito looking, um, you know, plastic paper. It's a cosplay essential over here. And for me, it is a doll essential. And we're just gonna cut out that part and this will act as kind of like the base for her gloves. We're gonna heat it up using our heat gun to activate it. And it does become malleable and kind of sculptable, you know? And 
And again, with Epoxy Sculpt, I'm using it to blend in the Warbler with her skin or, you know, the, the overall glove. You know, we're gonna add wrinkles to it and everything again to sell the illusion that it is real fabric and stuff, so, yep. Now, to color change her body, I'm taking my pan pastel in black. I don't know why I did this, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm just gonna show it anyway. This is a pan pastel I usually use to color change the skin tones because it is very, very potent and opaque. So as you can see, it's doing its job, but for some reason it was just flying everywhere. It was getting onto my face and I tried wearing a mask with it, but then I was like, it was just stressful. And I was really just trying to color change her shoulders, not even the entire body because I knew I was just gonna paint them. But for the sake of like not chipping and everything, I was like, I'll do pan pastels, but I changed my mind really quickly. So I kind of moved on from this, and yes, I sprayed her entire body with Mr. Super Clear first. Um, two coats to make sure that the paint, or in this case, the pastels will adhere to it. Um, but yeah, I got tired of trying to do that, so I'm over here with my matte acrylic paint. And I mean, I mean obviously, it's so much more um, effective. And oddly enough, really, really satisfying because you're seeing the color change so drastically. Um, the only thing with paint is that you hope that it doesn't chip. And I feel like at this part, because I sanded her shoulders, I sanded the joints on her shoulders, I think it would be okay. And we're just gonna layer a lot of Mr. Super Clear, you know what I mean? For her bodysuit's design accents, I am using my purple watercolor pencil. This is by Derwent, and I thought it was the best way to kind of just draw the design on her body. Um, I did think of using paint, however, I don't think I have the hand stability to make it look as clean as possible, so I was like, maybe I'll just try it with purple pencil and as you can see it is working the only downside to this is that when i spray it with mr super clear to set it the the color does kind of fade into it and it just kind of blends into the dark color of the black bodysuit so the key for this is to layer it and layer it and layer it and i think i layered maybe five times for the pencil to really just show up and I think for the very last spray, I kind of sprayed it um, faintly because I didn't want the colors to become um, faded. So yeah, but it's great. For these graphic lines, obviously, the main focal point are the swiggles and the swirls, the waves that I'm trying to make um, because it does mirror the hair that I was wearing, the swirls in the hair, and I thought that is kind of like what we're going for, you know, that is what we're trying to match. So not gonna lie, I had a hard time designing the swirls and the waves into her boots because, um, I don't know, some of them, they weren't really matching. So I had a couple of ideas that I sketched out through the iPad because I knew I was gonna do a lot of erasing and so I didn't want to do that onto the actual doll. So I was like, let me go and take a picture of this and design it onto the iPad. And as you can see, the what I'm doing right now is the fourth and final design that I was happy with. And um, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Some of them are like, it just doesn't work with the legs and some of them were too simple. So yeah, this was the perfect medium for sure. And here comes my love for the red bottoms, and yes, we are applying it underneath her hands. Her palms are gonna be red. Um, that is very much Bayonetta inspired. And of course, the shoes. We cannot, we cannot, you know, not make it red, of course. 
And this is how she currently looks. Obviously, you can see that there's some sheen to her um, suit because I sprayed it with Mr. Super Clear. And you can still see the purple, which is great. And I actually really prefer how it's kind of subtle in certain lighting and then it pops when the light hits it. I really do like that effect. Of course, the red bottoms are completed here in the bottom and ugh, I'm in love with this. So now let's go ahead and work on her face. I know you've seen this head so many times. This is the Wonder Woman head clearly over here. And yeah, I, this is one of my favorite sculpts. I love it so much. And I'm not saying that I share these features, you know? However, I do think that it will look great with my drag makeup, or at least hopefully. And skin tone wise, it was the best match. Now let's prepare her face, our canvas, and remove the existing factory paint with acetone or nail polish remover, of course, if it has acetone in it. And now she is reunited with, well, she's not reunited, but she is with this body. She is, you know, united with this body, um, of course. And I sprayed her face with Mr. Super Clear to prime it so we can actually draw on it with our pencils, our paint, and also our powder pastels, and so on. The one thing that I really thought this was a perfect match for me is her forehead. So my forehead is pretty um, sharp, I guess. So when I draw an eyeliner from the side, it's very, very long. But from the front view, it's very, very short. And to me, this Wonder Woman head, this Gal Gadot head, is giving that effect. Like from the front, the eyeliner looks very, very short and subtle, but from the side, it's so long. And um, yeah, that's kind of like the reason why I thought it was perfect. But you know, I did try to put my drag makeup onto her um, with a few, you know, editings here and there because I wanted her makeup to be red inspired and a little bit more heavier and a little bit more smoky. So yeah. Really fun though. I wanted to give her kind of like a vampire vibe, so I gave her purple eyes. Obviously it's supposed to be red, but her makeup is already red, so I was like, let's flip that around and make it purple. It's gonna match her entire costume anyway, so I was like, you know, why not? <laughs> and I thought it was cooler, you know? To create more of a smoky look, I'm taking this tiny micro brush and I dip that onto chalk pastels in red and also black later on, but that is how I will create, you know, the smoky look, the blurry effect, and I feel like it just blends everything in. And of course, we gotta give her some deadly cat eyeliner. My favorite part for most repaints is the eyeliner. I just like it really, really sharp, really, really pointy, and oddly enough, very, very satisfying. I forgot to pierce her ears and I'm gonna do that now while the Mr. Super Clear layers are still really, really thin. I try not to do this um, in the end because um, the Mr. Super Clear can crack, especially because I use so much layers of it. And that's why I already put her head onto the body because I don't like, like squishing their heads when the face is already done. I don't know if it's making sense, but because I use so much layers of Mr. Super Clear, in the end, it's just like a mask. So if I squish the head, the layers can crack and it can affect the face up. So I try not to do anything in the end. And that's why I give them wigs and everything like that. So I don't know if that makes sense, that explanation, but yeah. 
Oftentimes, for the lips, you don't really want it to be too flat. As you can see, this is just one color. So I'm going in with some pastels over here in dark red, oxblood, let's call it, and also black pencil to create a shadow and dimension to the lips. This is like literal drag queen techniques, you know? And of course, we cannot forget the beauty mark, you know, as I know on the picture it's on the right side, but trust me, it was on the left side. It was just a mirrored picture. <laughs> but yes. And of course, for the highlighter, we will be using three colors, a purple, a silver, and a red one. These are resin pigment powders, metallic powders, and they are perfect as doll highlighters. Again, you want to layer these like normal, maybe like four is a good layering process so that it really does pop. And yeah, the purple that I added onto her cheeks is just magic. I don't know, I'm in love. And again, let's add more glitter, let's add more highlighter, and more silver this time, you know, Emma Frost, eat her heart out. And um, yeah, she's looking so, so good. And I do think it's time to gloss up those lips. Because my drag persona is the unofficial member of the Black Moon Clan, I'm just taking these nail charms over here, let's get that crescent moon, and I will be painting this matte black so that it can represent the Black Moon Clan. I'm just gonna glue that on with some Elmer's glue all. Let's not use super glue or glue gun for the faces. I feel like it's just not great. And the same thing goes for her lashes. I'm using Elmer's glue all to adhere these individual fake human lashes one by one. And I believe I used seven or eight per eye. And now it's time to gloss up the ribbing details, the diamond cutouts. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite aspects to this look. The glossy and patent leather look. I'm so obsessed with it. And I layered the... This is Liquitex um, gloss, and I layered it three times to really achieve the high gloss look, the wet look. And here is the robe slash cape that kind of made it or break it. Um, yes, it started as a white robe and this was made by the talented Deluxe Designs on Instagram. And I actually commissioned this for uh, my birthday look, my all red birthday look. So yes, the, the idea was still to dye this red. Um, she just didn't have the red fabric and so I was like I'll just dye it myself and so I kept that promise and here we are with the Rick dye and I have scarlet and wine and um, the wine was the bad idea so as usual we go ahead and heat up some water in a pot and we're just gonna add the dye And now we're adding on the robe, and as you can see, it takes it instantly. Um, but at this point, I was like, hmm, it's not red enough, it's not bright red. Let's go, um, let's add the wine, maybe, which then turned it this color, which is beautiful. You know what I mean? I'm not complaining, it's such a beautiful burgundy oxblood color. Um, but yeah, it's just not right. It's just not the right tone. The The red itself is not... Yeah. The, the water, the, the color of the water, that was perfect. But the color of this specific robe is just not working for me. And so this is what we have, as you can see. Like I said, such a beautiful color. It's just not the right red for the look. Because I was really looking for a cherry red like a Louboutin like 
red you know what i mean like red red um and unfortunately this one's a little too maroon and so i tried everything and i even tried dyeing it purple which i i guess i didn't film but it still didn't work out it was it it came out kind of like red purple so I was like, I'm just gonna dye it black. And so here we go. So yes, I, I dyed this three times and I'm actually really happy that the black matches perfectly. And I even changed the ribbon to black so that it blends in more because it, the ribbon wasn't really taking the dye well. And clearly the stitches, um, like, you know, the, the thread is also not taking any dye, but um, it's fine. It works out. She looks good. She looks amazing actually. Now let's go ahead and give her some earrings. I found this purple earrings from the dollar store and it's just perfect. I love finding earrings from the dollar store for dolls because I don't know, they're cute. And for her choker, I will be taking this patent pleather fabric and also this ring and we're gonna make her a choker. Um, I thought the patent would look better because it will highlight the ribbing, the cone bras and everything, so yeah. And now let's go ahead and make her weapon, her whip flogger over here. And I'm just taking this um, skewer and also this elastic plastic cord, as you can see in lavender or purple. Um, it's actually pretty neon, but it's cute. Um, I'm painting the stick black for now because the cord is actually semi-transparent. It's kind of translucent. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cover the entire rod with that cord. And for the tassel, for the actual whip part, I have this earring, I believe I got from H&M. And it's the perfect color, and there's two tassels in it, so I'm just taking one, and this will be the weapon. You know, I'm gonna put that together seamlessly, hopefully. I actually wish I had a more complex story for her, but I just think that Christian is a regular college student trying to pass his classes and also trying to pay his college debts. One day, he came across a purple whip flogger, which he thought was a fly chaser, or in Tagalog, pangbugo ng lango. But he was mistaken. The whip enveloped his body and transformed him into Lady Hex, with the powers of of the unknown and to be determined, Lady Hex watches over the city to protect it from any harm, while also contemplating on how to pay those debts. Yes. <laughs> Honestly though, um, help me figure out what type of powers Lady Hex would have. Anything purple would suffice, of course. And now let's go ahead and work on her hair, her wig. As you can see over here, I am just taking my purple acrylic yarn. Yes, it is. It needs to be acrylic. And I'm just going to go ahead and process that and make it into fine hair. Um, as you can see, I'm using my blue pet brush over here. This is plastic to unravel it. And now I'm taking my metal pet brush to really fine tune the brush out as you can see, and then I am taking my hair straightener to really, really flatten the weft out, and there you have it. And of course, this is just one of many, um, so yeah, I just filmed this one just so you guys can see, but I have all of this prepared, a black um, section and also like two strands of purple wefts because that's all I need. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put on the wig cap. As you can see, I have kind of like a widow's peak moment, hopefully. it works out that way and you always want to start from the bottom and over here I am gonna go ahead and use some paper for the cones because we need a cone armature for you know the bumps the koan hairstyle that I'm trying to copy <laughs> and I'm just gonna paint that with you know acrylic black so that it blends in with the wefts and then we continue on gluing the wefts with hot glue gun You really do want to be careful with the weft placement for this type of hairstyle because it does require it to be really really sleek and clean, specifically on the cone parts, like you don't want those to be kind of bulky, you want them to be really clean. 
So yeah, and then now I'm just adding the two purple wefts for the front. This is going to be the swirls. And I was actually really nervous with trying to make the swirl design. So over here, I'm just placing some saran wrap over her hair so we don't disrupt the cones. And I'm just coating this weft with got to be glue, um, hair glue. And actually even glue could work, you know? And I'm just swirling it and I was waiting for it to dry and there you have it. So clean. Um, you know, there are some things that I had to trim off like the some excess glue, but overall she's great. And because the bottom hair is kind of like in a really, really long vintage page boy hair, I have to cut it shorter and we actually have to cut a horseshoe shape underneath. So as you can see over here, it's kind of like a half oval and that will really help with the vintage page boy style. I'm just so in love with it. I love the under curl moment. I feel like it's so futuristic looking. So over here, I'm just taking my heated metal chopstick and I'm going to under curl her hair. And because this is not real hair, you kind of want to be careful with the styling of it. You really can't just brush it out. You want to kind of unravel it slowly to really achieve the, the look, which is the under curled page boy look. And over here, I'm going to do more final stylings um, because it's already on her. You know, as you can see, she looks amazing so far. And I'm just using water the got to be hairspray and also the heated metal chopstick to really smooth things out really emphasize the horseshoe page boy look over here this this oh my god i love it and i just want to flatten the entire hair as much as possible onto her head i feel like that's so beautiful i don't know why and now we're done <laughs> 